guys, how's it going? We're going to do a quick uh, tutorial here on how to do super tiffs for HDR. Now the reason I preferred this uh, technique over just using, say, um, some sort of third-party HDR software or even the software built into Lightroom is I find that it gives a more natural looking uh, HDR uh, image that doesn't look so cooked, uh, doesn't have haloing all around the edges as much, and uh, gives you a lot more control, creative control in posts when you uh, bring it back into Lightroom to really affect the image. So what you're going to need is three bracketed shots first. So on most cameras you'll have a setting for bracketing. Uh, you can do three, you can do five, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to use three for now. And uh, what I've prepared here, I'm just going to reset these images because they've been slightly modified on the import. So we'll just reset one, reset two, and just maybe reset three. Okay, so we've got three images here of the same scene. It's nothing overly dramatic, but so this is uh, basically the, uh, the standard exposure, an underexposed and an overexposed of the same shot of this um, rusted out old stop sign in the sugarcane fields here in Okinawa. So what I'm going to do, no editing on any of these shots, I'm just going to go ahead and select all three images and then I'm going to choose edit in, merge to HDR Pro in Photoshop. Um, now this might take a little while, I'm working on my backup machine right now. Um, What's this? Okay, yes, I have to update that, but right now I'll just go ahead and do it anyway. So yeah, I'm working on a backup machine now. Uh, my main computer is uh, rendering a lot of video files, and I thought I'd take the, uh, the little downtime to make a, um, a little tutorial video for you all. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Uh, of course, uh, you can see the subscribe link in the top right-hand corner of your screen. Go ahead and click that, and uh, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any future tutorials or product reviews. Really appreciate uh, your feedback. Uh, it's what keeps me going with uh, this whole process. Okay, so right now, um, all three of those images uh, have been dropped into Photoshop's HDR software that's built in, this HDR engine, and it's giving me this uh, uh, very flat, boring looking image, which has actually contained uh, a lot of uh, ranges of uh, the dynamic range of this shot is very intense. It's got a lot of information, so it's got all the shadows and all the highlight information buried in there. Um, as you can see down here, you've got your, your uh, one-stop overexposed, uh, your uh, bang-on exposure, and your one-stop underexposed images getting merged together into one image. Now, if you, if you do notice you're getting uh, some bad artifacts and stuff in your shot, you can go ahead and manipulate that using some of these sliders here. So you might want to drop back uh, little things. You can have a play around with these here. It's not overly necessary to do this. Um, it just depends on what you feel like doing. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave that as default setting of zero. I think it was, maybe it wasn't. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's default setting as well. Anyway, right uh, at one, sorry. Um, in the middle there. Um, again, you, like I say, you can play around with these things if you want to uh, with your sliders. You don't have to do that because what we want to do is manipulate all this later in Lightroom instead of Photoshop. So let's just go ahead, leave everything at stock standard. Make sure that your settings here are at 16-bit. Feel free to remove ghosting if you want. Um, it'll just uh, tighten up the shot a little bit, but it's, uh, it's completely on you how you want to do that. And then go ahead and hit OK. Now what that'll do is take those three images, it's going to combine them into the one single 16-bit TIFF with all the information shadows and highlights from all three images buried together into one file. This can take a little while, especially these uh, images are 14 bit raw out of a Nikon D800, so they're uh, quite substantial in size and detail. So you can see there it's turned those three images now into a quite a large file. So now that's done there, we'll just go up here to our file menu and click save. And that's going to send it right back to um, Lightroom for us. So here we are back in Lightroom now. And we should have, yep, there is our, our tip. So we have our three standard looking shots and now our full HDR 16-bit tip. What has this done for us? Well, basically what it's done is it's given us incredible control over the dynamic range without losing uh, you know, too much detail. So, you know, we can really sit there and drop back a lot of these settings. 
and really play with the image, you know, up the contrast, put a nice little S curve in there, um, whichever way you want to go with it. Um, but you can now really manipulate your image and maintain a lot of control over how that uh, how that image is used. You can you know use things like your adjustment brush here and just bring out the detail that you wouldn't normally be able to get out of a single image. Um, now I'm just doing this very roughly. I'm not really taking any particular time or care with it. Just to give you an idea of uh, exactly how much uh, dynamic range you can find out of a single bracketed uh, set of photos. So that's um, basically how you do it. That's how you make a, um, a super tiff. And um, just to leave that right now. Um, and you don't end up with, like I say, you don't end up with so much ghosting and stuff like you do when you use uh, the, the standard sort of uh, software on a, um, to HDR a single image. It just gives you a lot more control in my opinion. Um, it's a lot more legwork. It's a lot more processing power. You do end up with some very large files depending on uh, what your uh, original images were shot at. But um, you can really pull out some really dramatic looking photos uh, using this technique. So uh, yeah, I hope you like the tutorial. Of course, like I said before, hit the subscribe link um, and let me know what you think by dropping a comment. This is Adam L. Happy shooting.